CTL, for example, I'm going to say create hyphen EF, okay, uh, pod dot YML. See, if I'm going to run this one, so it is going to create it and send this pod.yaml towards the api server that's what i explained right just go to the api server here and api server in in that one we're going to put like i need to have some three replicas or something so what it will do it will create the resources for three three pods actually or three containers actually but it's, it's not deployed it is saying that one it is the cube api says api server says that one okay i got a new request and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create three containers so it's a create three containers and it saves the configuration data to hcd cluster so you have something called as a cube scheduler what it keeps doing is it keeps keep on checking it it's, uh, it's keep on checking if there are any new requests came for creating of the node that is what it is saying here the cube scheduler control plane component that watches with the api server or hcd watches the newly created pods see when i say created the pods only the configuration is created guys it's not the uh, admin uh, it, it's not the uh, uh, containers are created it is just checking if there is any configuration for the newly created pods with no assigned means not it assigned actually the configuration configuration is saying i required three containers now what it will do is the cube scheduler checks for that one okay i have the information here in the hcd cluster saying that one i require i need to create three pods and uh, it, right now the pods don't have any node assigned so what it will do is factors taken into account for scheduling decisions including individual and collective resource requirement hardware space a lot of things are there where exactly i need to create the meshes like that you remember the labels which we gave which we gave in uh, during the uh, docker's form right the placement the placement of the container same here but what cube scheduler will do is it will check it out appropriate node and schedule that to that node actually let me tell you it's not it's not going to create it see the the scheduler what it will say is something like uh, you can like like a manager manager what he will do he will he will say that one imagine the new project requirement comes project requirement comes and saying that one we need to deploy 10 servers for example and the request will come to the the scheduler right who is a manager is watching any request so the project comes and what it will do is it will check it out the cube scheduler in the it's like a team manager which should which we check it out which uh, which team people are free which engineers are free and he will say okay you carry out this work right the manager will say you carry out to the to the subordinates carry out this work he he's not going to do the work right similarly what cube scheduler will do is it will keep on monitoring the api server as well as the hcd cluster to make sure that any new requirements came once the new requirements come it will check it out okay right now i have a new requirement came which is not having any nodes assigned actually but they said they should have three pods so what cube scheduler will do it will go check it out which nodes are free and everything and says that one okay these three pods should be created in worker node one two and three let me tell you cube scheduler is going to intimate it is going to say okay you need to these three no three pods are being allocated to node one node two node three that's it it's not going to create it then who exactly is going to create that is what the picture here guys the picture here you have something like in every node you have something actually you have something called a cubelet is running actually if you see yeah cubelet running in every node so what exactly this kubelet does is the kubelet will talk to the api server keep on checking actually if there is any new inputs or new nodes which need to be created so what exactly happens this ap this cube scheduler will create the three pods and post it to the hcd cluster saying that one so and so nodes are assigned when the kubelet talks to the K, uh, api server right it will get this information okay so node one you need to have a pod one node two pod two node three pod three like this though so when the cube scheduler is assigned this is how basically the nodes are uh, are allocated to particular pods actually okay so you can ask me why actually every every node has a cubelet why can't simply the api server can push whatever the uh, whatever the uh, what I can say like our scheduler can push whatever the parts it requires. See, this is to avoid a single point of failure guys So by any chance if the cube api server goes down due to some reason, right? It will impact everything, right? 
apart from that what they will do is they have made kubelet to go and talk to the api server and then find out if there are if there are any new pods allocated to that nodes so what will happen again i'll provide the manifest file and apply to the cube api server cube api server will read that one and say that one okay this deployment require three pods and it will save to the each hcd cluster and kubernetes or cube scheduler to find out that there was a requirement for three pods so it will schedule in appropriate nodes when it has been scheduled the kubelet is going to talk to the kubelet is going to talk to and get it again now here is the challenge here okay the cube scheduler says that one okay three three pods are being scheduled and node one node two node three are going to handle it okay and the kubelet took all the configuration and it has deployed appropriately in three different like it has one here two here the third pod here now the problem here is once the scheduler schedule the pods its job is done it's completed done it's, it has nothing to do after that one now imagine if one of the pod goes down or uh, two pods go down so we know that in docker service right what will happen if one of the pod goes down or one container goes down the service will automatically creates the pod in a different node or the same node right so but here who will do that because cube scheduler once the scheduler is done its responsibility is completed kubelet is response is completed because it is deployed now it is the cube management cube control manager which is responsible for everything which is responsible for everything so what i'm going to say is if i go back to the components if i go there are multiple things in that control manager you have a node controller you have a replication controller you have endpoint controller everything in the replication control this is responsible for if any one pod goes down right it will make sure that the exact number is maintained so the replication controller will make sure that it will actually recreate the pod okay it will recreate the pod so similarly node control is responsible for okay because cube control manager has multiple processes here node control manager responsible for which nodes are up and down replication controller responsible for desired state desired number of containers are running properly endpoints responsible for the ip addresses of uh, between it is actually in between populates endpoints it it that is joint service endpoints we'll understand once we talk about the services and service icon this is this is real advanced we really talk about it later okay and finally cloud control manager guys it really it's not that useful and if unless you deploy this into aws or azure what will happen is cloud control manager right imagine if i deploy a load balancer in kubernetes in aws right this cloud control manager will go and deploy a load balance a classic load balancer is a, is a controller that interact with underlying cloud providers the cloud control manager binaries so it's not mandatory you can use this because if you deploy in your on premises right there is no use of this one not a big use of this one so it's not like core component and going back to the picture and the final thing you are remaining is cube proxy so every node will have a kubelet as well as you have a cube proxy so what exactly kubelet said i already told you it is going to talk to the api server and check it out if any nodes are being assigned i mean sorry any parts are apply uh, assigned to that particular node now once the imagine i have assigned a pod for this particular uh, node so what will happen so it will basically it will actually go talk to it and it will create a pod here now let me tell you if the pod is created we're going to give 8000 is to 80 9000 is to 80 right that means it is the cube proxy similar it is like a, like a load balancer works inside uh, each server actually each node actually the cube proxy is responsible for closing and opening of ports because if i give hyphen p 8000 is to 80 right now the cube proxy is responsible for opening port opening the ports in the ip tables of the linux second thing is basically it is also responsible for uh, talking to the other one so if the request comes to cube proxy if it is there it will also send to the other node as well it acts like a load balancer just like in a service i told you right in docker service you have uh let me do it let me go back and show it to you here if you come down so cube proxy kubelet is an agent that runs on each node in the cluster it makes sure that containers are running the pod a kubelet takes set of pod specs that are provided various mechanisms and issues okay Cube proxy is a network proxy that runs on each node on your cluster implementing part of service concept see kubernetes service 
see the cube proxy maintains network rules on nodes then these network rules allow network communication to your pods from network sessions inside and outside the cluster Q proxy is operating system packet filtering layer so normally normally nowadays i think you have like ny proxy sto few more things are coming but again Q proxy is the default proxy uh, which is which is responsible for implementing the networking in each node and opening the firewall ports finally container runtime nothing but the software which you required for contain running containers kubernetes supports docker container ready cairo all these things and also core i think core is not there but anyway right now we are deploying the cops right it will deploy based on the docker 18.09 or 06 apart from that you have some other things not required so what are the things you have api server which takes the input from us you have hcd which is a database for the uh, kubernetes cluster cube scheduler which schedule the pods and appropriate nodes cube controller responsible for node controllers as well as replication controllers endpoint service accounts cloud control manager for cloud related things and finally in node components you have kubelet which is agent running kubernetes agent running on each node and cube proxy which is responsible for networking and firewall components in each node so these are the core components or core elements of a kubernetes next what we need to do is we need to create a cluster guys we need to create a cluster uh, let me start my machine here because it's shut down okay so how we are going to do that one we go you see there are multiple ways you can you can actually deploy the kubernetes like first you can actually install the cube admin after that you add that extra machines and implement it but uh, to deploy a kubernetes or to manage to or to use a kubernetes in aws you can do it in two different ways one is you use the managed kubernetes using eks means uh, aws elastic uh, kubernetes services the second thing is using cops cvs kops which is kubernetes operations so in this session right what we are going to do is this is not aws class so what we are going to do is we are going to use the cops and deploy the totally the aws uh, the kubernetes cluster on aws okay now for that first uh, it might be it, it this lab might be chargeable for you guys why because you might run maximum of uh, four machines one is for management three for uh, kubernetes cluster and also it might require some 60 gb of storage as well which might uh, occur might be on 50 50 to 100 rupees of charges actually okay fine then let me see let me log into this machine By the this Kubernetes class, right? I'm going to post in YouTube, guys, as a as introduction session for Kubernetes for uh, for the future courses of Kubernetes. So if you see this in the in the YouTube, don't be surprised. Yeah? Only for Kubernetes section, not the Ansible section. If we start Ansible today, I think it might be not possible, but anyway, we will see. Okay, let me log into the AWS first and uh, first we required one uh, Linux server where I'm going to deploy everything we Use the Linux server. We download the cube CTL uh, cops and everything and then deploy it uh, It's not easy guys But if you want to easy way right we can use actually uh, uh, easy way is to use the uh, AKS or EKS uh, sorry uh, Google Google compute engine as well as AKS is also easy Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, AWS dot Amazon dot com <clears throat> First let's deploy <laughs> I'm going to launch instance. 
I'm going to use Amazon Linux actually. RT2 Micro will do. An important thing is I'm going to select the green VPC, public subnet uh, is fine. And next thing is I'm going to select a role, guys, uh, which is having admin rights actually, because you need to talk to the AWS to deploy. So I use this role. Uh, come down, give some IP, add storage, add tags name i'm going to give like uh, the name i'm going to give is uh cops manage or like a k8s management server yeah configure security group launch it okay excellent so next is what we're going to do is i'm going to uh, give you the document which we are going to use So if you go to your uh, your lab notes, right? I think I'm pretty sure I gave a Kubernetes installation actually. So if you see, we're going to use this one. We're going to uh, Kubernetes installation. We have different options here. Now, what are the prerequisites uh, in order to use the Kubernetes uh, cops? Actually, you need to have a DNS zone, guys. First. You need to have a DNS zone as well as you need to have a S3 bucket and uh, you also need to have a SSH key gen. You need to create a key gen actually. Okay, so so what we'll do is let's create a DNS zones and S3 bucket and everything. So before that, let me show it to you. I'll, uh, I'll say like uh, GoDaddy for if I go to GoDaddy, for example. If I go to my domains, right? So what are the things you can do here? Um, I have some. So if you see this, this looks like expired. Actually, you can renew it. Let's see if I click, click on renew. How much they are charging if it is XYZ domain. So I'll say that uh, XYZ domain. I really don't require this 150 US dollars. I say like I don't require it. Okay, so it's not required instead of that one i can buy 10 domains like that anyway it doesn't matter so after all if i leave it like that right after that he'll come back and give me for same type, same price okay so what i'm going to do that is um you have some 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 something here called as uh, vishwadrona.com is there right so i'm going to use this one guys like uh, it's expires on april actually so what i'll do is i'm going to go to manage dns If I come down, these are like old DNS servers. This is this is earlier. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a route 53, guys. So that is more important. So I'll go here. I'll go to route 53. So I already have a different uh, zone, but this will be a new zone. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to create a hosted zone. So I'm going to give like this. So create it. Done. You have some uh, DNS servers. Now your responsibility is you need to going to copy this. Go to the domain. Change it. Paste it. <clears throat> 